Take a look around and find somebody to war eagle. It's showtime. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Indeed. Hello, Auburn, Alabama. At all points. All positions. All arrays of the compass. Around the globe. And around your town. Where War Eagle, y'all, can be heard in return with joy. Particularly on that venerable hillside at Heisman and Donahue on this special day. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good day to you. As always, I hope this message finds you truly well and joyful and that you, tomorrow, Saturday, March 20th, 1130 a.m., 11 a.m., gates open central time if you can if you're able if you're nearby I hope that you will find your behind right in the stadium watching practice you know why because you can because you've been invited your purchase in the franchise has been restored brothers and sisters you're being treated as a welcomed part of the family not as some nefarious interloper best kept at bay treated like an unwanted stray animal except of course on fall Saturdays when you're expected to drop a grand on game tickets and accommodations then you're loved not anymore welcome back home Hello, consumers of Auburn Broadcast Transmissions, and welcome to Auburn Stuff, the podcast where we discuss the philosophy of life in orange and blue. And warm greetings as well to our listeners from Bruton to Scottsboro and in Prosperity, South Carolina, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, Hendersonville, North Carolina. And our buddies at Black Bear Coffee in Hendersonville. A much better ville than Asheville, if you ask my opinion. And all the way out in Yuma, Arizona. And our Auburn listeners in Liège, Belgium. Thank you for joining the fun. Oh yes. I am filled with joy. Have you seen the photos coming out of Auburn football practice? Brian Harson looks like the guy I want to coach my team. You see him? He got the navy blue AU sweatshirt and a ball cap and a whistle around the neck in shape and intense. Not sporting a ridiculous straw hat and old guy clothes that are Four sizes too large, picking his nose and hitching his belt every two minutes. Hey, convey an image, project who you want to be, be as you wish to seem. Furthermore, Brian Harson is operating like the guy I want to coach my team. How about it? How about the announcement of the open practice on Saturday? As I sit here in the palatial studio of Auburn Stuff Media Enterprises, it is Friday, March 19, 2021, 2.23 p.m., 14.23 Eastern Daylight Time, Daylight. What's better than sunlight in any sense of the word? Yes, 
Brian Harson is operating like the guy I want to coach my team. So tomorrow, I hope uh, if you're in the area, if you're a student, if you're a fan, if you're looking for something to do on a Saturday afternoon, I think the weather forecast is cool, 50s maybe and a little overcast, but hey, you're sitting in a giant walk in that stadium, so you don't want the sun shining really anyway, now do you? Unless you can get, although you're not going to get at that time of day, I don't think there is shelter in the shadow of the giant video board in the south end zone. But anyway, I hope you can make your way by there because this may seem like something small, something that's sort of worth passing conversation, but I disagree. I think it's a lot more than that. It says a lot more than that. Everybody's seemingly stuck in this unsolvable mystery about, well, we don't know how the Harson administration is going to do. The Harson staff, the Harson regime, the Harson tenure. We just don't know. We'll never know until we see some. No, this is how you start visualizing what's going on. Dateline Auburn, Alabama, Pat Dye Field at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Auburn football holds open practice. Fans are welcome. When's the last time you heard anything like that? I keep talking to y'all about mission and process and execution. Quote Brian Harson. I want people to know what we're trying to establish. Do you hear that? When's the last time you heard that? Well, uh, we're, we're real good and we're going to try real hard. But fuck all of y'all because none of you can see anything except come shut your mouths and come in on Saturday and watch me fumble around. Anyway, back to the quote. Coach Brian Harson. I want people to know what we're trying to establish, our culture, the recruiting part of things, and the development of our team. Continue to support our players, our coaches. Continue to be positive toward our program and what we're establishing and doing. Get excited about the season coming up and be ready for that, end quote. Are you feeling it yet, Auburn family? Are you feeling it? As you know, for years, I've been bellyaching about the ridiculous general exclusion and dispossession of nearly everyone in the periphery of Auburn football. That's all of us that aren't standing on the field in uniform or wearing coaches clothing. All of us out here. We've been in the wilderness for a quite some time we've been excluded and dispossessed when you should be building a coalition of allies what kind of twisted strategy is hiding in your little bubble your little your little special practice space where no one can see you hiding in your little cia super secret world and being dismissive and antagonistic to people who could champion your cause Can't figure out why things are going the way they're going. Well, you're out there making enemies for no goddamn reason. Putting up firewalls and literal walls to shut people out and shut people down. Banishing, cutting off, denial of access. You know, the most successful program did not get that way by excluding everyone except their elite alumni and donors. They maintain their juggernaut by growing the group of people, growing the group of people who can participate in ownership of the mission. But look at Clemson. Clemson's been doing this for decades with IPTE. If you're not familiar with IPTE, it stands for I pay 10 a year. And I don't know how long it's been going on. I didn't bother looking it up, but I know that I've seen IPTE stickers on cars for... 30 years at least. That gets everybody involved. If you're not an alumni, 
if you couldn't afford to go to college, if you went and served in the military instead, or whatever the reason is that you are not, I guess, officially a part of the uni- of the uh, university. Well, here's a way to get you involved because you do. You're a, even if you're just a fan with air quotes. Well, what do you do? You buy merchandise. You drive advertising dollars. You pay to sit in the stadium. And a million other things. You drive the local economy when you visit. So, being inclusive is foundational for growing something like this. Growing an organization. And look with Ipte with Clemson. Look what that foundation has created. They're doing okay. A little outreach and hospitality can fill your war chest, you know? Can generate positive word of mouth and maybe even engender a few kind words in the media. Yes, I know, you may take a dim or skeptical view of the media, but it is utterly and grotesquely insane and ultimately self-destructive to actually go out and create enemies and antagonize people instead of building relationships and creating allies wherever you go. I'm just saying. The people who can't see what a momentous positive step this is aren't thinking deeply enough on a strategic level. But that's okay. Because the new coach is and the AD is. And all you need to do is be supportive and make sure at least your little squad is pulling in the right direction. And so I suppose today's show is brought to you by the refreshing, life-giving breeze of competence. How about that? What's going on around the world that's... uh, that's worthy of discussion. Um, oh, I, I meant to bring this up a while back. Did y'all see? I know probably a bunch of you play golf, watch golf, love golf. And I saw this a couple of weeks back and wanted to comment on it, but there was other stuff going on. What is the deal, PGA? Apparently, the PGA is making another rule change that will allow players, I guess, next year, 2022, to use measuring devices on the course during tournament play. I mean, can we just dispense with it and just have robot golfers? My God. One of the most pure athletic endeavors in the world. You against the elements and the earth with a stick and a ball. Part of the game, part of the skill and execution of the damn game is that you read the terrain. God, we're just killing everything, aren't we? Let's, let's, let's just go ahead and let 12 year old boys run the world because it seems like that's where we're headed. Stupid. Absolutely stupid. Um, oh, here's a thing. Uh, chicken, pork, and granola. Things that I buy on a reasonably regular basis at the grocery store. Chicken, pig, granola, you know, made of oats, and grains. Shit that grows everywhere. Why are these three things so expensive? Chickens and pigs are fucking everywhere, man. My God. There's about 500 times as many chickens and pigs on the earth as there are people. And that's probably a low exaggeration. A low attempt, not exaggeration, but attempt at humor using a crazy number. There's probably six trillion chickens and pigs in the world. Why is that shit like $5 a pound? And granola. 
teeny little like 12 ounce thing of granola in the grocery store is like six bucks. What the hell? I mean, you know the answer. It's not the cost of, of the product. It's the 87 layers of taxes and, and fees and crap on top of it. Anyway, discuss that and get back to me. Chicken, pork, granola. How can we lower the cost? All right, so back to the back to the mission at hand, football. As we have people on the field, players are on the field wearing helmets, toting footballs. Whistles are blowing, playing in the grass in the sunshine. That's another thing that Coach Harson said at, uh, I believe it was his last press conference. Um, talked about playing outside, playing on the same field and playing outside, playing on the grass. They've been practicing a lot in the stadium from what I understand. And one thing I've never understood, okay, first of all, I'm from the South. I understand in August, dude, it's 500 degrees and the humidity makes it like 500,000 degrees. So if you need to conduct a practice in the shade of your little um, indoor practice facility, an afternoon practice, I'm fine. But it's always bothered me because you play 0.0 games inside. Maybe you have some kind of kickoff game here or there. And if you ever make it again to a national championship or one of those games, the playoff games, maybe you'll play inside. But you play the vast majority of your games on grass outside in the daytime. Why are you not? Con- why have you not been conditioning your players for those extremes? You don't train. If you don't train harder than you play, there's a, the old axiom is the more you bleed in training, the less you bleed in combat. It's the same principle. You put that work in on the field. You suffer on the practice field so you can have fun on Saturday because you're better conditioned and tougher than everybody else. So, anyway, slight digression. So, uh, um, practice in the elements. Practice where you're going to play. I like that. And the execution of the plan. This is what what I've been yapping about in this offseason in the uh, transition with the new staff, which is the execution of a coherent plan. We talk a lot about competence. Having a plan. Getting everyone on board and executing your plan. And all signs are pointing in that direction. I am so damned excited to see what's coming for this football team. I can't believe everyone isn't bursting at the seams at the potential thrill of experiencing a competent offense. After so many years of the skull-pounding, hair-ripping, eye-bleeding, same predictable and slow-developing six plays ill-fitted to the personnel being used that only work about once out of every 20 times. Well, we don't know if Coach Harson's going to be successful yet. What? What are you talking about? No, nothing in life is guaranteed. I'm sick and tired of hearing that, but he's never not been successful. All of a sudden, that's going to stop. Well, we don't know if he can win down here in the big bad SEC. Jesus, you must cease with this stupidity and learn some new lines for your low-level discourse. That is archaic, parochial, and nascent thinking in the extreme. Competence isn't mercurial, nor is it regional competence is universal but not common competence is the dominion of any victory in any aspect of life competence drives the successful machine 
a hierarchy built on malevolence or malfeasance or bullying or tyranny will always flame out and fail. Competence will always succeed. Competence drives the successful machine. And we don't own, we talk about, don't know if he can win down here. We don't, come on, man. Come on. We don't own football intellect down here. I mean, look around the league. If it weren't for the influx of innovative coaching talent and concepts from around the nation, we'd still be probably running 45 dive plays a game. Herschel left, Herschel right, Herschel up the middle. So buck up, y'all. Come on. Buck up and be fired up and inspired. You're about to see 21st century football planned and executed by talented and driven people. If you want something to worry over and fret about, I don't know why you would want that. But if you want to focus some energy on something that you need to worry about, I don't know. Maybe it should be the relentless onslaught of cranial feces dropped by misleading and outright dishonest media outlets. Good God. Just, I I read lots of articles because I have to. But I advise you, as I always have, turn the damn TV off. Stop reading these idiots. What do I always say? What have I always said a hundred times? Why are you paying attention to anyone talking or writing about Auburn who's not in Auburn all the time. There's a handful of people to whom you should be paying attention when it comes to reportage of Auburn athletics. So, uh, yeah, if you got any subscriptions uh, to any outlets like that, like AL.com or any of these jackasses, uh, just cancel that shit, man. Don't put yourself through it and don't give them your money. You're getting just pre pre-programmed nonsense. Reactionary. Uh, I'll, I'll just put the air quotes around the word journalism. Reactionary keyboard pecking so anyway stand up and actively defend your coach your program and your school against intentional slander you know who i'm talking about anyway i implore you auburn family to fear not the quasi unknown of a new horizon of auburn football but don't take my words at face value listen to the players bunch of good articles this week coming out of practice and that's this is the 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 veil of darkness being lifted and finally things are happening so before you have just you got a transition of a coaching staff and you've only got players in the weight room and this that and the other and you got people transferring and leaving and running oh i don't know i don't i want to play for a new coach i want to go wah, wah, wah. and just hand wringing and nonsense until you get a coherent group of people on the field and then you get this I pulled this from an article by Josh Vitale of the Montgomery Advertiser wrote an article entitled for Auburn football players shock over coaching change turns into excitement about future well no shit imagine what happens when you take a step back take a deep breath Critically analyze your situation and make sound decisions. Well, it's like a miracle. So, quote. Uh, it obviously caught us all off guard. Junior linebacker Owen Papo said Wednesday before the team's second practice, we didn't expect that to happen. Talking about old Gus being fard. But since the end of January, when the Tigers began their winter conditioning program, that shock has been replaced with excitement. Nuh-uh. Back to a quote 
Uh, the new staff that came in, man, we love these guys. How about that? Papo said. They're all great people, every single one of them. Really, the message was for me and different players on the team just to get everyone to buy into the dream that Coach Harson is trying to bring us. I mean, so far, everything's going good. We love these guys. We're buying into the culture. Huh. Back to the article. That culture is demanding. Quarterback Bo Nix described Harson as passionate relentless and being very attentive to detail okay i'm gonna stop right here because the following sentence says but that's a good thing he added you see what we're doing to these young people harson is described as passionate relentless and being very attentive to detail that there is no possible vector of the universe in which those descriptors are followed by but. It should be and. There sh- it shouldn't exist at all. There's there's full. Uh, where where are we at? Uh, Harson is passionate, relentless, and uh, very attentive to detail. Period. Full stop. Anyway, back to the article. There's excitement about the schemes the new coaching staff is bringing in on offense and defense, too. Nick said the offense Harson and coordinator Mike Bobo run is very, quote, very multiple, end quote, in formation and will have him under center more. Interesting. They didn't realize really anybody went under center anymore. It was always a catastrophe before because no the quarterbacks never did it and they'd go under center twice a game and usually fumble the ball or something horrible would happen but anyway uh so that's interesting um the team has had only one practice so far this spring and not even in full pads but papo said he and fellow linebackers Jacoby mcclain are already ch- quote champing at the bit end quote because and that's by the way that's proper it's not chomping at the bit it's champing at the bit uh, because of what coordinator Derek Mason is implementing on defense. Quote, he's a great guy. We love the system that he's bringing in for us, and we love him as a person, Papo said. The run fits that we see right now, I'm just going to say it. It's going to be something crazy this year. I really like it a lot, man. The opportunity to make a lot of plays is going to be there, end quote. Quote, change is difficult. Change is hard to go through, Nick said. Oh, my God. (sighs) Yes. Children, change is difficult and change is hard to go through. But change is a part of life. Every day. Every minute. Anyway. Change is difficult. Change is hard to go through, Nick said. But sometimes... sometimes if you take advantage of it on the other side of change it can present an opportunity and I think that's what we have right now we have a great opportunity with our new staff we're all excited end quote you hear all that that is the direct result of competent leadership executing its plan And it brings me back to the horrifying lack of quality mentoring and guidance regarding players transferring. You just look around at what some of these guys did and you're like, what what are you doing? And not only is this a destructively now, now culture, it's bail, quit, cut and run, path of least resistance cowardly and me 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 which brings me right to something i read today which is the ridiculous end of christian tut's auburn career all right disclaimer i am not anti-christian tut this the following statement whatever may come out of my face is not anti-Christian Tut, anti-player, anti-transfer, anti-NFL, whatever. But this thing just seems weird. So Christian Tut was a marginal defensive player. 
And I say was because he ain't around anymore. Um, he was a marginal defensive player. He made a couple of plays here and there. He he mostly played nickel and not not terribly well. Now, I will, I do not blame players for lack of development. I blame coaches 100%. So, whatever it was um with Christian Tut's development as a defensive back, I don't know. That's on the, that's on the coaches to me. But anyway, so after uh uh the last guy was fired, um at some point thereafter, he uh, entered the transfer portal. And you're thinking, well, I think, what? why? What are you doing? I mean, I wasn't hurt about it because, you know, on field. I'm, I'm looking at film. Fine, good luck. And then he removes himself from the transfer portal. And I guess he declares for the NFL draft, which I, I'm like, uh, what? Dude. If you ever play a down in the NFL, I will be stunned. Again, maybe they can take you. You weren't being developed properly on the field by the last staff. And someone in the NFL can take you and take your clearly present natural talent and wire it up properly. But so he declared for the draft, I guess, and then he withdrew from the draft and I guess, I don't know, said he was coming back to Auburn, but then because he's he had, according to, I'm, I'm looking at an article um, by Nathan King on Auburn Undercover, just pulling stuff from this, and I guess he's uh, one, one semester short of his degree. And look, dude, once again, I got to repeat myself. I'm not anti-transfer. I'm not anti-NFL. I'm not anti any of that shit. I'm very highly pro-freedom, but I want, I'm very pro-sound decision-making for the betterment of humanity because you don't do anything in a bubble. So, I, I don't know what's going on there, but I'm looking at, I, in reading this article, one of the things I always say is, is, mentoring and the people around you who's helping you make these decisions and it looks like he's got a a solid tight family uh good faith communication but this just seems seems weird to me and a couple of things from this article that he said just kind of bothered me uh about just sort of like the whininess of the whole well, what'd you do? You fired the last guy, and I liked them. I, I'm taking my stuff and going. I just, I get that feeling out of this, and and to each his own. You do what you need to do, but I don't get it. So, quoting Tut from this article, I felt like I was ahead of the eight ball. I knew what was going on before they got rid of every coach here. Tut said Thursday. I kind of just tried to weigh my options out since I've been here. I've had two DB coaches. Boo fucking who. My mindset was if I wanted to have a new DB coach, it would be someone else. That was my mindset going in. Taught, talked things over with his parents. Considered transferring, but was met with roadblocks. And then back to the quote. Me and my family, we were looking at other places, but it wa- but but it wasn't other places that would allow me to do what I wanted to do. Boo fucking who. Come in and play nickel, which I wanted to do. Who first of all, who's ever said that? I don't think I've ever said I want to go play nickel instead of I want to be cornerback or a safety. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, and then he goes on to whine about pro day. Tut spent the last, back to the article, Tut spent the last three months training in Florida for his pro day. Blah, blah, blah. Tut was frustrated, however, by what transpired at pro day. He said the defensive backs, uh, he and Jordan Peters and Jamie and Sherwood were shortchanged by the way the event was organized. Oh, here we go again. Should I say it again? Boo fucking who. 
Quote, the DBs, we only did two drills, Tut said. Two defensive backs drills. I trained three months, three times a day for that, for us to just do two drills. Boo fucking who? This, this, just a lot of entitlement here. Seems like a good young man with a good family, but there seems like a lot of entitlement here. Everything I read here was, stuff's happening to me. Why is everything happening to me? Lord have mercy. Then he goes on to say, quote, I was just trying to showcase, you know, my talents coming out of my brakes, moving my hips. Well, we would have liked to have seen that too the last couple of years. We really didn't get a chance to do that. They shut it down early. We did. We only did like two DB drills and they shut it down. I was a little disappointed in that. Well, life is disappointing. And really, anyway, the only reason I bring that weirdness up is, first of all, it was weird. Second of all, it just kind of cements the whole, this confusion over change and new things and this this uh, transfer deal of, you know, poor consideration. And I'd like to see the young man finish his college degree at some point. He's a semester away. Just do it in your spare time or whatever. I'd like to see him play in the NFL. Once again, I feel like I have to clear these things up because I'm not anti. I want to see him really more than anything. I want to see him and everybody else be as successful in their lives as they possibly can. There's a lot going on here that doesn't lead down that road stark realizations of life um so pro day do you pay attention to pro day i mean again i've said this before uh i i don't pay attention to recruiting because until you're here officially on campus wearing a uniform with orange and blue i I just don't care i wish you well as a human you understand the difference i just don't care about what you're doing I can't pay attention to high school boys. I got enough of that shit with my daughter. That's about as much attention as I can pay to high school boys. I've seen it. I don't want it. Anyway, and then after you're gone, I wish you all the best and all the success in the world as long as you're a decent human being out in the world and in all of your endeavors. But I don't care, really. I told, I've told y'all before I'm done with the NFL because it's just, well, it went from being sanitized, corporate, boring bullshit to now uh, some sort of political entity, which is just pukesome. So I don't care. So pro day. I mean, the one thing that stuck out to me, I flipped up my page that I always keep open to refresh to see what the hell's going on. And I see some article entitled that I didn't even click on entitled Anthony Schwartz something like uh, this is not a quote something like Anthony Schwartz uh, wows drops jaws or opens eyes or something with blazing 40 time and I'm like okay how's that news you're fast we already knew that you're super crazy ultra fast we already knew that what else you got Can you run a route? Anyway, I wish all of them well. That is basically all I have to say about Pro Day. Uh, I've been doing a lot, you know, a great deal of yakking about this subject matter, about, about building a complete life, about competence, about doing things to the best of your ability, doing the best you have with what you have. Always striving, staying on mission, staying on the path, and understanding that this path has no end. You just keep going, keep achieving, keep climbing, stay on the path. If you fall off the path, we're here to pick you up. If I fall off the path, I hope y'all are there to pick me up. So anyway, I've been doing a lot of talking about that subject matter, and I get it. It's not all sportsy. But my point is deeper than any given day on the field. I take as great a joy in Auburn victory 
as anyone. But beyond that, my intent is to promote and foster the kind of philosophy that lays the foundation for many successful days on the field consistently and far into the future. There are great things happening in Auburn right now. And I want nothing more than to enjoy this with everyone pulling in the same direction. Now, I know that's a foreign concept for some in our extended family. But fear not. You wanted cutting edge, high speed, low drag. Well, buddy, you got it. Time to enjoy it. Other Auburn stuff. Let's see. Equestrian is galactically dominant. An unarrestable force of nature in horseshoes and lipstick is what they are. I think it's 40 consecutive match victories now. Next up is the SEC championships, which I believe are in somewhere near Athens, Georgia. I don't know how that happens, but whatever. I guess you got to go where the horses are. Um, They haven't lost 40 consecutive. They haven't lost since cable television was a thing, I think. Seriously, though, I think I think I was actually at their last loss. Sorry about that. When I took my daughter to the SEC Championship in Blythewood, South Carolina, right up the road near Columbia, which turned out to be a specious, dubious, questionable scoring loss to the Booger Eaters from Athens Academy. What was that? 2017 March? It was this time. It must have been March of 2018, I guess. So three, four seasons ago, something like that. Anyway, war damn horses, ladies. Kicking ass. Continue. Put another, put another SEC ring on. Put another natty ring on. Or whatever they give y'all. I think they give you rings. I think I saw a picture of them. Uh, baseball. Baseball begins SEC play uh, today versus Ole Miss over in Oxford. If you're in the neighborhood, stop by and yell War Eagle. Uh, They've been up and down this year. They're okay. They're okay. They've been up and down this year, though, with some kind of wobbly relief pitching here and there. But the guts of the season is ahead, and hopefully they can build success and experience series by series in conference play going forward to culminate and where you want to culminate especially in a longer season basketball baseball things like that that have an, a more extended season it's not as urgent every win every game isn't as urgent as football so uh yeah um growing the uh growing their uh their depth of talent and experience game by game series by series in conference play Softball, well, they kind of have the opposite issue of baseball. Um, Solid start to the season, except for being swept at home by you-know-who. Solid start to the season. They can pitch lights out. Forget it. But they can't seem to hit the ball, which is vexing somewhat. Uh, Women's hoops, intelligence has it that... uh, Alan Green, our fantastic athletics director, um, may be swinging for the fences regarding a new hire, new coaching hire, new head coach for the uh, women's basketball team. And I say to this, hell yeah, get you some of that. Salty earth and lay waste to nations in your job, Mr. Green. Excellence in all corners of life. Fill the stock with the best. Get after it. That's what I'm talking about. Gymnastics. I'm not sure what's going on over there, but at least they fucking beat Georgia. I mean, they lost seven meets by a combined score of about two and a half points. Seriously. Rough competition. Chin up, ladies. Get after it. Finish strong. Soccer grinding it out of note. Coach Karen Hoppe's 250th win came against fucking Georgia, so that's nice. 
track and field has been stacking some hardware and national championships. Good for those young men and young women. Strong work out of you. Men's basketball, well, we're just kind of waiting, aren't we? On all fronts, just waiting. Waiting to see lots of different things. All right, what else is going on? Look, let me look over here. I pulled up another few articles of, uh, ah, uh, article by Nathan King, Auburn Undercover, article titled, entitled, uh, Noteworthy Weight Gains, New Jersey Numbers on Auburn Spring Roster. And, and reading through this was very uh, encouraging. Some things that I've heard, some things that I've read regarding the workout plan. Strength and conditioning, which was a source of consternation for a lot of people over the last eight years, kind of not understanding what just exactly what in the heck was going on in the weight room and why we seem to have so many injuries and things like that. But uh, things have changed and the players are loving it. Lots of positive comments on that. But you talk about um, weight changes. They are clearly building... A group of monsters for the trenches and you just face palm and go duh so once again competence reigns and some of these uh some of these weight gains you like to see this like you got um Zykevius walker is up to 289 gained 23 pounds gonna be a beast at defensive tackle uh, new guy, Lee Hunter, offensive line or defense. Yeah. Defensive tackle also up to 321. Jay Hardy. Holy shit balls. You guys, Jay Hardy, defensive tackle up to 317. JJ Evans, wide receiver bulked up, up to 224. Um, who else? Ed rusher, Derek Hall, 251. Watch out. Uh, offensive line weight gains are up. Check this out. Um, Cam Stutz, 337. Tayshawn Manning, 335. Um, hell, Sean Shivers gained 10 pounds. Good God, he could kill somebody. Uh, Brandon Council, 335. Keandre Jones, 345. Cam Riley, linebacker who, you know, we said was a little light. He's gained 10 pounds up to 219. Um, Tyrone Truesdale, back to defensive tackle. Ty, Ty Truesdale is uh, 335. The defensive line, I, I don't know if anybody's going to be able to run on them. Especially with this new... Uh, I mean, it's. I guess it's going to be a hybrid from what they're talking about. It's not going to be a strict three-four or four-three or anything like that. They're gonna they're gonna adapt. Imagine that shit. Um, who else of note? The tight ends: John Samuel, Luke Deal, J.J. Pegues, all up. 248, 255, 308, respectively. Good God, did J.J. Pegues need to gain eight pounds? Talk about going to kill somebody. Good Lord. Our punter lost weight for some reason. Down 13 pounds. And uh, they got Jaron Handy a little bit lighter coming off that edge. So that'll be good. Oh, and another more, uh, another offensive lineman. Um, Trox, 305. So beasties, beasties in the trenches. That's what I loved about this article and that's the uh, that's what I wanted to bring to your attention if you did not see that so good things going on in training and in the weight room uh, number changes New New Jersey's the number changes I guess really the Devin Barrett who wore number 10 uh, has switched to 22 which uh, was worn by my favorite Auburn running back of all time not named Bo and that was Brent Fullwood. So that was fun for me to see. What else we got going on here? Clicking around. Yeah, here's another article. Um, New Auburn culture. Different but exciting. How, 
we got to bridge this gap and get behind, get get beyond this whole. Oh, this is different. We haven't been doing things like this. But wait a minute, cool shit's happening. I, I'm really excited to get past that little hitch in the uh, in the verbation there. What else? There's another oh article by Jason Campbell. By the way, when I mention about there's about there's a handful of people in the Auburn media that you should be reading and paying attention to. Jason Campbell is one of them, and is probably number one on that list. Uh, he wrote an article a couple of days ago titled "Daily Improvement: The Goal for Experienced Offensive Line." One would hope so, and. Just a few, check out that article. There's a lot. Again, I am going to, I got to operate with a base of givens. And the things that the evidence told me from uh, the last eight years-ish is that player development was a mystery. Uh, Offensive line recruiting and coaching was a mystery. I'll just use that word for lack of uh, using worse language. Anyway, um, offensive line recruiting and coaching was inexplicable beyond all measure. I I, I can't split it. Inexplicable. Anyway, so uh, let's wrap up with what we got here. Any. Well, hold on. I don't think I finished my thought about this. Uh, my apologies for the disjointed thoughts as I have been interrupted so rudely by phone calls and texts of people trying to do business with me. Can you possibly imagine during my podcast recording? Anyway, there's lots of returning, uh, lot, lots of experience returning on the offensive line. And I think I started to say that I'm operating under the base of... Uh, the base philosophy that the existing offensive linemen were poorly coached and poorly deployed. So there is experience coming back. Uh, They've beefed up this experience. There's new guys coming in that are talented. We're still obviously short. What's the left tackle is the mystery. Who's going to do that? But I am more hopeful than I've been in quite some time with uh, Will Friend taking over offensive line duties that they can be what's the word of the day? Competent. This offensive line does not need to be elite to win. We're going to get there. I guarantee you they're working to get there. But this offensive line does not need to be elite to win they just got to keep Bo from uh, getting planted in the dirt or running for his life too much so uh, looking at my tabs I think that's about all I have for today it's probably a good pretty good place to uh, to close it down so to review uh, competence and uh, welcome back back to the family says coach brian harson we uh we want you back in we're not gonna close the doors on you anymore and then demand your attention and your money on saturdays only so that's good and uh pga measuring rule change stupid feel free to send me your thoughts on that and uh, chicken, pork, and granola. Why so expensive? Uh, I expect a comprehensive, in-depth essay on that subject when we meet again in five or six or seven days. So we'll wrap it up there. Bring her into port. And with that, I bid you all good day. 
And when you rise to the new dawn, put your feet on the floor with determination to be a little bit better than you were yesterday. Do the best you can with what you have relentlessly. Auburn Stuff can be found at auburnstuff.podbean.com on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and lots of other places in the podcast universe. YouTube is coming. Go ahead and download the Podbean app. I can't imagine that uh, you can't find all of your favorite podcasts there in that uh, collection. So download the Podbean app and remember, support what you like. Actively support what you like. They're making things disappear far too easily. So subscribe, rate, review, give, share, whatever you can do. All those things help. All of those things help. And as you move on with your day, remember at all times, your objective is to be mindful, be fit, and be authentic. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, it's all you have. But most of the time, it's all you need. Until next time, War Eagle, everyone. Oh, and go to practice tomorrow. You know, because you've been invited.